I now request our alumnus, Mr. Manorajan sir, Assistant Vice President and Area Credit Head, Access Bank, to introduce our Chief Guest. Dignitaries on and off the dais, a warm good morning to one and all. I stand before you bestowed with the honor of introducing our distinguished and beloved Chief Guest. When I was asked to introduce Mr. T. N. Manoharan, two contrasting thoughts immediately hit me. The first one was, apparently I am doing a redundant exercise, introducing someone who does not need an introduction at least to a gathering of management professionals and students. The second conflicting thought was definitely that of excitement. It is not every, every day that you get to speak to someone as accomplished and as decorated as Mr. Manoharan. So curbing that palpable excitement within me, let me start with the duty that I am given today. Mr. T. N. Manoharan was born in an agricultural family as a son of freedom fighter Mr. T. L. Narayana Swami Choudhury. Being the son of a freedom fighter instilled in him a sense of deep nationalism which was evident all through his life and his career which I could make out when I had the honor of listening to him in yesterday evening's session on, on the Satyam case. He obtained his PG degree in commerce from Sri Venkateshwar University and law degree from Madras University. He completed chartered accountancy in the year 1983 and started his practice. And he achieved that ultimate pinnacle that every chartered accountant in the country vouches for. He was the president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India in the year 2006. Even during the height of his career, professional career, he has not left one passion and that was a passion for teaching. He is considered one of the most renowned teachers in the field of tax and finance in the entire country. He is considered one of the experts in the tax field and has written numerous books on taxation. <clears throat> Probably he came to mo more in the lim limelight during the January 2009. In the first week of January 2009, along with the cheer of the new year, the Indian business field was hit with a storm. The Satyam scandal broke out. When Mr. Ramalinga Raju sent that letter, which he wonderfully summed up saying, it was like riding a tiger without knowing when to get out, without being eaten. Well, the impact that the letter had was a far cry from the beautiful metaphor that he had used. And the government of India had no other option but to step in and to appoint a well-seasoned professionals to run, turn around Satyam and ensure that it does not collapse. In a case where the primary responsibility was in finance and audit, it was not surprising that Mr. Manoharan was selected as one of the board members of Satyam. And within a period of 100 days, he and his eminent team of directors not only sustained Satyam, but also ensured through a public auction, the company was sold to the Mahindra Group. The biggest testimony to his services to Satyam and its turnaround is one small fact. Of all the government appointed board members, Mr. Anand Mahindra personally requested Mr. Manoharan to continue even after the merger was over. And he continues to be one of the board members of Tech Mahindra. He is, also, he is also one of the board members of the flagship company of the Mahindra Group, that is Mahindra and Mahindra. He has won numerous awards and accolades. I don't, you know, for the passage of time, I just want to mention two. In the year 2009, CNN and IBN recognized him and his fellow board members with the coveted Man of the Year Award in the field of business. And in the, in the year 2010, the government of India, in recognition to his services to the Indian nation, conferred on him the coveted Padma Shri Award, one of the highest civilian <laughs> honors that a citizen in our country can be honored with. In 2005, he was selected as a chairman of Canara Bank, one of the largest and oldest public sector banks in the country. And that's a portion he still serves. Sir, it's a matter of absolute honor, privilege and pleasure for us to have you, a person of your 
multifaceted personality amongst us and we are looking forward to hearing your wisdom. Thank you and welcome. Every now and then, a special person leaves a significant imprint that can last forever. Yes, I call our, I request our Honourable Chief Guest, Padma Shriti and Manoharan sir, to deliver the keynote address. Dr. Rupa Gunasilan, Director of BSMED, my good friend uh, Mr. S.M. Shankar, President of the Alumni Association, Jeff was uh, travelled all the way from Kerala to accept the award on behalf of an architect's group. Distinguished uh, alumni present here, professors, faculties, and my beloved students. It gives me immense pleasure to be with all of you this fine morning on the occasion of this nexus 2018-19, organized by the BSMED Alumni Association in collaboration with the department. At the outset, I must congratulate and compliment the Ketex group for having rendered human service for the society at large. All of you may know and recall when I say what Avaya wrote in the Eastern years. Aridu aridu, manidarai paratal aridu. But if the same avayar is present in the present, uh, you know, scenario, what would have been our wordings? I just imagined. She would have said, because now test tube baby, medical advancement, everything is there. So she would have written, I think, Yelidu Yelidu Manidarai Piratal Yelidu Aridu Aridu Manidarai Vardal Aridu. That is what she would have said. In that sense, I think this Ketex group family is doing human service by touching the lives of 37,000 families living in that panchayat, which is something quite inspiring to all of us and worthy of emulation by any institution across the country. I must uh, thank M Mr. Manur Hajan for the wonderful introduction that he gave about me. He is also a banker, I am also a banker. Na Avayar Pati Sonamari, Kambara Mayanatana, Manava Parvatal Padikrapo, Evlo Araga, Kambar, Ramana Nodi, Mananali, Vavarichir Karan, Sandosha Pata, Achiri Patrika, Kadan Pata, Nenjam Pol, Kalanginon, Langai Vendan, Abdin or expression or Ipo Kambar in the Runa and Edir Parana, Kadan Kudutar, Nenjam Pol, Kalanginon, Langai Vendan, Edir Paran Menikra. I hope you are. You agree with me. So, Andamari, there is a change is inevitable. There is a paradigm shift everywhere. My dear young students, you will agree with me as humanity evolved. Education took us from thumb impression to signature. That was the empowerment given by education. But today, because of impersonation, forgery and technological advancement, we are moving from signature to thumb impression. Biometric identity is much safer. So that change is happening, whether you like it or not. Even on the domestic front, 20 years ago, if you had asked an housewife to decide on the smallest of the matter, she would have said, I need to consult my husband. Today, every husband says the same thing. I need to consult my wife. <laughs> it is. It augurs well for the society and it is in the right direction. So changes are inevitable and bound to happen. But how are we going to embrace the change, accept it, evolve as a successful person in the midst of such a dynamic environment? You know, that is the you know, uh, purpose of empowering you in uh, this great institution. In fact, uh, programs of this nature and maybe a talk of mine today is not going to build a future for you. It will not build a future for you, but it will build you for the future. 
whatever be the future, you will be able to adapt and emerge out stronger and successful. That is the purpose of this talk and that is the purpose of the alumni taking this effort to organize this great event. In fact, one virtue which you can pick up as human beings from this alumni association is the sense of gratitude. You know, the sense of affinity, belonging, loyalty and gratitude the award to Bharati, our university and more particularly the Bharati, our school of management and entrepreneur development is something that needs to be imbibed by all of you. You have to look back with a sense of gratitude all through your life to this institution and that is demonstrated by this uh, association being formed and successfully sustained over a period of two decades. And I'm sure it'll go from strength to strength and you will all be part of it as years roll by. Another thought that comes to me is, you know, you must know what is your potential. You must know what is your strength. In fact, I would say being born in India is by itself a blessing and a strength for all of you. Why am I saying this? Out of 750 uh, billion population, global population, India's population is 130 billion, which means for every six persons in the world, one must be an Indian. While American po population is a stagnated population, European Australian population is a declining population, Chinese and Japanese population is an aging population, it is only India's population which is an young population and you belong to that. Less than 20 years, 41% of 1.3 billion is positioned and 20 to 59 years, 50% of the 1.3 billion population represents and 9% is only 60 years and above. So therefore in this young population, Opportunities await your arrival after you emerge out qualified from this institution, not just in India, but across the globe. Having toured, you know, few continents, I have met my erstwhile students. In fact, some of them used to feel guilty when they used to converse with me. So I used to ask them, you are well positioned and uh, you, why are you having this sense of guilt? They used to say, all said and done, I am not within India. I used to tell them it is not important that you should be within India, but it is necessary that India should be within you. So that wherever you are and whatever you do, credit will come to India that an Indian has done this, Indian has contributed to this. So from that perspective, my dear students, you know, the entire globe is awaiting your arrival as graduates from this organized institution and opportunities are galore. In fact, few decades ago, American parents used to tell their children at the breakfast table, children eat well, because millions of Indian children are starving out of poverty without this meal per day. Today, they are compelled to tell their children, children study well, otherwise millions of your jobs will be taken away by Indian children. That is the potential of Indian youth and American parents have realized it. But the million dollar question is, whether we have realized it and we are going to channelize it in the proper way. Because the demographic advantage which India has can transform as demographic dividend only if the youth are empowered with knowledge and skill sets. If knowledge and skill set is not possessed, then the demographic dividend may get converted into demographic disaster. That should be prevented at any cost. And therefore, you know, empower yourself with the required knowledge and skill sets. In today's Indian context, unemployment is not the problem. Everybody is talking about jobs, lack of jobs. Plenty of youth are there, plenty of opportunities are there. But the unfortunate scenario is the matching skill sets are missing. So whether the youth are possessing the skill sets which the opportunities are offering, if that gap can be bridged, I think we can transform India into, on a fast track, a very developed economy. And it is not at all difficult, my dear students. You may come from different backgrounds. Look at the uh, 
alumni present here how successful they are in their own ways respective fields it is not at all difficult just one example let me quote for your assimilation till july 2008 this world did not know about the existence of one girl born in 2000 when the century turned around in assam in a backward family she took passion for athletics but she did not have the funds to buy a sports shoe her coach managed to get a sports shoe donated or sponsored for her she practiced with that and in july she went to finland and competed under uh, in the under 19 world athletics tournament championships and that day when she was running the race if time permits you google and see himadas 400 meter sprint in finland even the commentator refused to believe that an indian can overtake an american or a european or an african on a track event because he was shouting no indian has ever done this no indian has won any medal in world athletics competition he was shouting and when she crossed the line he also shouted hema das creates history as the first indian to win a gold medal and that is not the end of the story a girl who struggled who could not afford to buy a sports shoe is today the brand ambassador of adidas which is the global shoe manufacturer how the transformation can happen a teacher asked these children in the classroom what is the similarity between dr radhakrishnan pandit jawalal nehru uh, you know a few personalities like that there was pinder of silence one student stood up and said they were all born on government holidays <laughs> actually when they were born those days were not government holidays it is by their contribution out of their reverence to their manifestation those days got declared as government holidays all of us are ordinary to begin with but if you dream big and with committed self confidence you march ahead what appears to be impossible will become possible and the society will start perceiving you as an extraordinary achiever so moving from ordinary to extraordinary is given to you it is not all that difficult failures will come setbacks will be there everything will not come in a platter for you but actually in life it is not the distance that you travel that gives you enormous satisfaction it is the hurdles that you crossed that will give you phenomenal satisfaction so therefore you should be willing to embrace all the bottlenecks that will encounter you and emerge out stronger and setbacks are not only for the startups or the novices in any field it can be even for legendary personalities even for champions it can happen let me quote one example from the most favorite sport of all the youth cricket can you tell me what is one achievement of sachin tendulkar which no other cricketer in the world has accomplished to so far and may not be in the near future scoring 100 centuries isn't it it may look very simple to appreciate and admire 100 centuries tendulkar has uh, scored but if you analyze the data when was the 99th century scored by sachin tendulkar he scored it on 12th of march 2011 against south africa in nagpur after such a legendary cricket year scores 99 centuries and that too considering that in 453 innings he played then 18 times he got out in the 90s scoring one more century is that so challenging and difficult it should be a child's play isn't it so next match when he walked in everybody was awaiting to upload for the 100 century it did not happen next match it did not happen match after match it was not happening not that he was not giving his best he was walking in to score a century and create history but the 100 century was not forthcoming 
and ultimately my dear friends after 370 days 33 innings on 16th of march 2012 he scored 100 century in bangladesh but once he scored 100 century all those 33 setbacks 370 days of attempted failure did not matter at all it was a matter of celebration remember that every you know setback to you is going to make you learn become wiser and stronger and emerge out successful and the moment you achieve success the past is irrelevant that is the lesson that is the message you can pick up out of tendulkar's case study one more message i can give you it may not be all that palatable to the fans of tendulkar but i still would like to make that message 99 centuries came easily to tendulkar because he played for cricket for the passion of playing cricket for the country for the nation 100 century did not come so easily because he was playing for the century same analogy applies to every one of you work with passion for the organization for the institution for the success of the team for a noble cause for a public mission your glory will automatically come your accomplishment will happen as a matter of time so that you have to infuse in yourself and then the future is going to be brighter than you aspire yet another thought that comes to my mind is you know you should develop an ability to embrace adversity ability to embrace adversity is something that is most required in this challenging environment that you are going to face as you come out what is this ability to embrace adversity having you know ability to cope up both joy and sorrow both happiness and grief in a composed manner we are not robots we are human beings but if you can develop evolve that seasoning of your thought process dealing with tough situations tough things do not lost but tough people will lost and that's why they say when the going gets tough the tough get going and you should belong to that category in fact let me give one example of arthur ashe who was a wimbledon champion 1975 he won the championship in wimbledon and he was the first black american to be ranked world number 1 in tennis history he underwent a bypass surgery heart operation and blood infusion happened but unfortunately that blood infused, uh, infused was infected because of which he suffered a deadly disease and he was in his deathbed at the age of 49 years millions of fans wrote to him across the world expressing their anguish and empathy one fan even urged him to question god of all the people in the world why god has chosen me chosen you so you should question the god why me you know what was the response of arthur ash an evolved human being in such a critical de- uh, situation in death bed counting the days of his life he wrote i thank you for your affection and concern but the fact remains world over 50 million start playing tennis among them 5 million learn to play tennis out of them 500000 start playing professional tennis among them 50000 scale up out of them only 5000 enter the circuit within them only 50 become eligible to play grand slam tournament like wimbledon out of them only 4 enter semi final 2 to the final when i entered the final won the tournament lifted the wimbledon champions trophy and the whole world applauded i never looked up to god and asked him why me having not asked then in pain i should not be asking now that is the composure that will stand you in good stead all through your life it was mentioned that i i am not only a chartered accountant i have also qualified as a lawyer when uh, i completed my law graduation we were offered felicitation by senior advocates in the bar association 
one of the senior advocate gave us enormous courage and confidence and conviction to face the external world as we were qualifying. And he ended his speech like this, which I am only repeating. He said, my dear young friends, don't bother about anything. Only there are two things possible in life. Either you are well or you are not well. If you are well, there is nothing to worry. If you are not well, then only there are two things possible. Either you get well or you die. If you get well, there is nothing to worry. If you die, there are only two things possible. Either you go to heaven or you go to hell. If you go to heaven, there is nothing to worry. If you go to hell, even then there is nothing to worry because all the senior advocates will be there to receive you. <laughs> that is what he said. I don't know whether he literally meant what he said or not, but the message I got was, both in good times and bad times, seniors are there to guide you, hold your hand, nurture you, support you. That is the message. And for all of you, that is the message I think the, all the alumni are giving. We are there, don't worry. Whatever, whether it is good times or bad times, we are here to groom you, nurture you, guide you, support you, handhold you and evolve you as a successful entrepreneur. In fact, you should dream big. In your studies, you should dream big. In, after emerging out qualified, you should dream big. In fact, there are students who dream, why should I be chasing five companies for a job? The kind of skill sets and knowledge with which I emerge out, five companies should chase me to recruit. I've seen it happening. And there are some students who say, why should I be a job seeker? I should be providing jobs by becoming an entrepreneur. You should. Some students think, how long I can be a history reader? I should not be any longer reader of history, I should be creator of history. And it is possible. And how long your signature will continue to be a signature? It should transform into an autograph one day. That is possible. So dream big, nothing is difficult. In fact, if India's balance sheet is drawn and you are asked to fit in yourself, where will you fit in? You should visualize. Will you fit in on the asset side or will you fit in on the liability side? I have no objection whether you want to fit in on the asset side or liability side, but the only suggestion I have is, if you aspire to fit in on the asset side, ensure that over a period of time, as you evolve, ultimate goal should be to be part of the goodwill of India on the asset side. If you want to position on the liability side, you should evolve in such a way that you become part of the general reserves so that government can draw out of you and declare dividend to the public, people. That should be your ambition and goal and value system. In fact, a mention was made by Rupa Madam as well as other friends here on the stage about Padmasri Award. Actually, Padmasri Award, when it was given, my true sense of emotion was an anger, sense of anger. The reason for the anger was un uh, understandable to me. I have done my duty as a citizen at the call of the nation. For doing my duty, why should the government give an award and settle the score? As if I have done expecting something in return. That was my anguish and anger. But when I saw all members of my profession, chartered accountants across the country, owning it up as if it was given to them, to their profession and celebrating it, that anguish transformed into satisfaction. Okay, something has happened, good happened to the profession, so that satisfaction was there. But it was not happiness. But you know when I derived happiness? When I walked into the Rashtrapati Bhavan on 7th of April 2010, my 95-year-old father and my 85-year-old mother stood up and applauded, tears rolling down their eyes. That was the moment that satisfaction transformed into uh, happiness. Why I am telling this, my young friends, is all that you visualize and imagine as success is not real success. What is success? Only what makes your parents, your teachers and professors feel proud about you, that is what is real success. 
So, and that will come only when your success is value driven, value based achievement, ethically, you know, if you are able to achieve something, uh, you know, having spoken about Avayar, having spoken about Kambar, let me also say, Buddha Vande Aran Mani Thurandu Amaidi Nadi Chandra. Namanariya Pere Amaidi Thurandu Purulai Nadi Chandra Gundarakra. Walvadarku Purul Tevaidan Analam Walvadilum Vuru Purul Vendu. Ilya That disposition is what, you know, Anna Kitex is doing it for the society by out of their own profits, they are serving the community for their upliftment. Maybe we start our life thinking, my family is my universe. But this Ketex group has started thinking, universe is my family. The reverse of it. And that's why they are able to do it and achieve it. So, um, my dear... Uh, you know, young friends and of course the proud alumnus of this institution. It has been a delightful experience for me to come over here, share my thoughts yesterday and uh, also today as part of this award uh, giving ceremony, considering that we have, you know, further uh, awards presentation and acceptance speech and all that, let me cut trail with this. But only one thing I want to tell my young friends, all that examples I have quoted, you may think they are born champions and all. No. They, please believe that you can also do it. Vinnai path vidiyum endra nambum ni, unnai path mudiyum endra nambu. Then nothing is impossible. Vaal kail pirappu nam kail illai, irappum nam kail illai, anal sirappu nam kail thaan irukkiradu. So, how best you can conquer the challenges, emerge out stronger, will be in always in your hands. I congratulate both uh, my good friend SM Shankar and uh, Rupa Madam for converging into this kind of a meaningful event successively and may this Alumni Association uh, grow from strength to strength with successive leadership. I could meet many of the youngsters who are uh, having great ambition and uh, urge to transform the association with this institution on a long term basis and that is why I think that alumni club also was proposed. I wish all your dreams come true and uh, you know there are only uh, uh, you know, finally to end up 18th and 19th century belong to Europe, 20th century belong to US. 21st century must belong to India and we must all make it happen. All the very best. Thank you. And now I request Dr. R. Shanmugam sir, retired professor BSMAD, to present a memento to our Chief Case Padmashri, Mr. T. N. Manoharan sir. Thank you, sir. See, this intensity of knowledge can be gained only by reading 100 books and more than 100 books. Thank you, sir. You have given a very wonderful speech.